All right, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a function uh, and this function is going to be called uh, from our view. Uh, basically, uh, what this function is going to do is uh, it's going to get the category of uh, the health activity type, basically. And um, it's going to get the health stat uh, for for that category. And category is something that we're going to provide so we can create the type out of that. Okay. And uh, essentially what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take that uh, type and uh, query the um, uh, health store health uh, health kit health health store and uh, basically um, get the value out and uh, then uh, we're gonna pass it back uh, as in uh, uh, as a state like you know as the uh, health um, not the state health stat uh, object okay so I know there's uh, a lot of things I uh, just <laughs> told you about. So why don't we go ahead and uh, take a look like, you know, what we're going to be creating. So we're going to create a function. All right. And this function, we're going to call this uh, request health stat. Okay. Uh, this is going to take category. And this category is going to be a string. Uh, we're going to have a completion. which is going to have an escaping closure uh, with health stat, um, array of health stat being returned, and this closure is going to return a void. Okay, now first thing we need to do is uh, we need to get the store, make sure that our store is initialized, so store is equal to store. Uh, we also want to make sure that we can get a type out of the category. So we're going to say let type is equal to HK object type dot quantity type. Okay. And the identifier that we're going to provide, uh, we're going to actually create a helper function that's actually going to give us the category. So let me go ahead and create a private function here type by category. All right, and this is going to take a category. And it will return us HK quantity type identifier. Okay. And uh, we're going to put a switch statement on this on the on the category that's being supplied. And we'll say if the category is active energy burned for example we're gonna return active energy burned okay uh, case something we're gonna return apple exercise time so i'm gonna take this and uh, if you recall the category names are ex exactly the type uh, identifier name so i'm gonna use this um, third one is going to be Apple stand time. So that's going to be our category that's been supplied. Um, and another one is going to be basically the distance walking running. Okay. So we're going to take that and uh, I'm going to copy it and paste it as a key. And then you have step count, step count, return, step count. Okay, just make sure you spelled it correctly. Okay, and uh, default, uh, we simply gonna return the step count like so. Okay, so uh, what this helper function is gonna do is uh, it's gonna translate uh, that uh, string category that's been supplied to us um, into an identifier. So we're gonna simply call this uh, type type by category, and we're gonna supply our category here. Okay. If uh, our guard statement can resolve this, that's great. Uh, otherwise, we wanna 
how you would want to return from here because we don't have an identified uh, type and we should have an identified type in error to query because our user must have given the permission to only those uh, types that we requested okay so uh first thing we're gonna do uh in order to create uh, so we, what we need to do is we need to create a query now the query itself takes a few parameters like it needs the start date end date and um, uh, it uh, also uh, needs the anchor date uh, and uh, uh, basically we need to create uh, a predicate that's going to help us um, query the data uh, the uh, data from uh, like you know basically the predicate for the data that's being queried from the store okay so uh, we're gonna first create a start date now start date is going to be calendar dot current dot date okay and uh, we're going to use the overload uh, that takes um, date that takes by adding okay so um, <coughs> excuse me by adding value to this is the one that we want so by adding day value negative seven to date that's today's date okay so if and if this turns out to be nil then we can say start date as current date okay at the end date will be the current date all right and anchor date uh the date on which uh these uh um this data is going to anchor upon uh, which is going to be the uh, first day of the of the week so um first day of the week or oh, we need to determine that we don't have a, a way to uh, a simple way to de determine but we can create a date extension for that okay uh, we want our first day to start from um monday and iso 8601 calendar actually has that our capability to start first day as monday so what we're going to do is that we're going to create a date plus extension um file and uh what this file is going to have is basically an extension to the date and uh we're going to say static func first day of week and uh, are we gonna return a date okay and uh so like i said iso 8601 calendar has first day of the week defined as monday so we're gonna return the calendar with identifier identifier as iso 8601 and we're gonna get the date from and we're gonna once again create the calendar with um, identifier iso 861 dot date components dot date components in from so the in part is um Okay, so from is going to be the date. Okay. And uh, if nothing is returned, then we're going to simply have date initialize the today's date. Um, otherwise, what we need is years for year for the week of year and week of year. Like so okay so this is going to give us the first day of the week so what we're going to do here is uh, use this to anchor our data on so we're going to say date dot first day of the week uh, we're going to have a daily component like how often do we want this stats data like you know if we want every other day or we want daily so we want daily so you're going to create a daily component for this and it's going to be a date components day one 
okay so each and every day in last week is what we want to get the data from okay all right so uh next is basically creating a health stats array which is going to be the uh, array that we're going to return we're going to have a predicate this predicate is going to be basically hk query and we're going to create a predicate with start okay so so we're going to say predicate for sample dot predicate for sample with start this is where our start date is going to go and then end date and then the query options basically we need a strict start date so that's the option if you have multiple you can include it inside an array uh, we're gonna say if the type is equal to so um, so yeah actually you know we don't need this uh, we can simply say query is equal to and uh, this is uh, the query that we created right here so query is equal to HK statistics collection query okay and uh, for the quantity type uh, we're gonna say it's basically the type that's been uh, resolved right here from the category and uh, then your uh, predicate all right option is we want cumulative sum and we want an anchor date so we have already created that interval is basically the daily component that means we want it like you know uh, daily stats okay now next what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply say query dot initial result handler is equal to and we get query statistics and error okay statistics and error so we're gonna say get the statistics statistics and enumerate over those statistics from start date to end date this is gonna give us the final data right the stats okay uh, so I'm gonna simply say stats and uh, this is just a uh, stop we're gonna we're not gonna use this this one right here so I'm gonna just say we can ignore that let stat is stat is equal to health stat okay and uh, it needs a stat value so we're gonna say stats dot some quantity okay and for the date we're gonna say stats dot start date okay and we're gonna take this value and we can assign it to health stats dot append stat okay all right so once the enumeration is complete we're gonna call the completion and we're gonna supply our health stats to that now we want to make sure that our query has something so we're gonna say query before we execute it so we're gonna say query is equal to query otherwise return and if we succeed to go further then we're gonna simply call store dot execute the query that we have constructed right here okay so that will give us the uh, Yeah, so that'll give us uh, basically th that'll give us the, uh, the the execution results. Sorry, I was um, I was confused with the with the brackets. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go ahead and 
make sure it builds so everything is building so we have uh, requested the authorization from the user about reading the health data we have requested the health stat by supplying the category okay so next up uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start putting together our uh, content view first okay so we're going to put together our content view uh, where we're going to be initializing this repository and stuff like that and uh, we're going to launch our app uh, basically to uh, see how does that permission dialog looks like and uh, basically just go from there